Ukraine enters a new round of war. New defense strategy against Russian attack is being implemented. Ukraine is entering a new phase of war with Russia where the main thing is to dig. The Ukrainian forces designed to perform combat missions are forced to dig trenches in anticipation of a large-scale offensive which the invaders may launch this spring. At the moment, Russian troops are attacking Ukrainian forces at several points along the 600-mile front line as it seeks to capitalize on its recent capture of the eastern city of Avdiivka, its first major battlefield victory in months. Moscow knows Ukrainian units are short on fresh soldiers and ammunition, but Kyiv is preparing. The lands west of Avdiivka are filled with excavators. The front is more like a construction site than a battlefield, emphasizes the Wall Street Journal. The publication claims that Ukraine is trying to build fortifications similar to those that Russia built a year ago. The enemy's defense showed deadly effectiveness and deterred the offensive of Ukrainian troops last summer. Kyiv is facing the same task now. Troops are carving up the earth to create anti-tank ditches and trenches, especially in areas near Avdiivka. Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said that almost $800 million had been allocated for the construction of fortifications. Franz Stefan Gadi, a Vienna-based defense analyst who recently toured frontline areas in the eastern Donbass region, gives an alarming prognosis. The lack of layered defenses along the front line should be of some concern for Ukraine. The situation will get quite critical for the Ukrainian forces. At the same time, soldiers in the combat zone near Avdiivka admit that combat conditions leave them no other options. In the circumstances we're in, we have to dig, entrench and build by ourselves, said Maxim Zorin, the deputy commander of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade. Thus, troops assigned to combat missions are forced to dig trenches and often under fire. But the difficulty lies in the fact that there is little effort on the part of the personnel to build effective fortifications, the WSJ emphasizes. Zorin hopes the line of defense toward the city of Pokrovsk to the west is sufficiently developed to withstand an expected Russian assault in the coming weeks. A call was made in Germany regarding the launch of a rocket attack on Russia's Ministry of Defense building. Russia's Ministry of Defense building, or the headquarters of the country's intelligence service in central Moscow, are legitimate targets that should be attacked. The deputy chairman of the German Parliament's Oversight Committee, Roderich Kieswetter, has stated. The lawmaker, who is a former German Army General Staff Officer, insisted that Ukraine should take the war to Russia. Ukraine should be given the opportunity to take the war to the Russian territory. Kai Sweater told a talk show on state broadcaster ZDF, noting that Defense Minister Boris Pistorius has already called for the same in April 2023. The only thing I will add from my side is that it is also necessary to attack the Russian Ministry of Defense or the Intelligence Service, the MP said. It is absolutely clear that this is not about civilian targets and not about people, but about explaining to the Russian population that they are the aggressors, he added. When asked by the host of the show whether Kai Sweater thought that the attack on Moscow would be rational, the politician responded that those were Pistorius's words. To attack Moscow with Taurus missiles? The host asked, No, now you are putting words in my mouth. No, if within the framework of the agreement we oblige Ukraine to use missiles only in the occupied territories, then they will act according to this principle. Kai Sweater argued, the calls for attack on Russian government buildings come amid the latest diplomatic row between Moscow and Berlin following the leak of an audio recording in which German military officers discussed a potential attack on the Crimean bridge. Several of Germany's allies have argued Berlin to drastically improve security measures after audio of Bundeswehr military officials discussing an attack on Russia's Crimean bridge were leaked. RT editor-in-chief Margarita Simonian last week released a transcript and audio recording of what was claimed to be a conversation between four senior German military officials. They could be heard discussing deliveries of Taurus long-range missiles to Kiev in a way that would help them to maintain plausible deniability when it comes to Berlin's involvement in the conflict. 
The conversation also suggested the presence of foreign military personnel on the ground in Ukraine. The German military has confirmed that the conversation was intercepted and a probe into the leak is underway. Biden considers sending U.S. Army's money to Ukraine. The U.S. government is considering tapping the U.S. Army budget to provide Ukraine with much-needed military aid, Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. One of the sources told the news agency that a final decision has yet to be made. The sum reportedly sought by the White House in the Pentagon reserves around $200 million is a small fraction of the $61 billion worth of Ukraine aid President Biden has been requesting from Congress. The president will once again urge legislators to approve new assistance for Kiev during his State of the Union address, Bloomberg said. The Senate backed the aid package last month, but it is now stalled in the White House due to political infighting. House Republicans have so far refused to back Biden's bill, hoping to pressure the president into enacting tougher measures to deal with the influx of illegal migrants crossing the border with Mexico. The holdup in Congress is occurring at a crucial time for Ukraine, whose troops have been forced to retreat from several key positions in the Donbass in recent weeks. President Volodymyr Zelensky and other officials in Kiev have cited the shortages in ammunition and other equipment as reasons behind the losses on the battlefield. For nearly half a year, the U.S. Congress has failed to pass legislation to send weapons to Ukraine. Speaker Mike Johnson continues to be the steadfast roadblock, arguing that aid for Ukraine will not be considered until an immigration deal is passed, something that has failed to gain traction with congressional Democrats. However, Democrats are not without blame in putting Ukraine in this untenable situation. Without an assenting Congress, the White House's options are limited, but they are not non-existent. With luck, Democratic leadership will hunt for bold solutions to abet Ukraine before it is too late to save Ukraine. <music>